Good morning, Sondra family. Welcome to your Monday morning weekly setup. I am Jennifer Ogilvy, and I am coming to you from the Dallas, Texas area. And for those of you who have been with me before, you know I sound a little different today. The cedar is blooming in Texas, and it has gotten in my throat, and I feel fine, but I, I have a very special voice for you guys today. So I am leaning into my alto singing voice this morning. Yes, there, there are no allergies like Texas allergies, but truly I am feeling great and so glad to be with you this morning as we finish up our January Abundance theme and jump into our brand new February journal to set up for a new week. Also on the call this morning, you guys have Team Jennifer, and Jennifer is coming to us from Minnesota, and it is freezing there, and she's jumped on to give you guys a wave, and we laugh. We have worked together long enough now that we are dressing alike on a Monday morning, so that kind of made our day. Um, I saw lots of new friends joining us this morning. Welcome, welcome to one of the best communities that you will be a part of, the Sonder family community. Um, this is a safe space. We share from our hearts. We share as we are comfortable, but just know that by being here, you are among friends and you have cheerleaders on your side. I love this community. So let's go ahead and, and get going. Um, we've got a busy week ahead. Just a quick word. Make sure that in your chat, you see that you are responding to everyone. If your chat says host and panelist, then just Jennifer and myself will see your comments. And what you are sharing is important. And we want you to be able to share those comments with everyone in our gathering this morning. So again, just double check and make sure that you have your chat setting to everyone. If you're still waiting for the postal worker to drop off that February journal, it's okay. We're glad you're here. It's coming. Grab yourself some scrap paper, take notes. And then my, my reminder every week is have your cell phone Feel free to take pictures of screens that speak to you or grab a screenshot. We're going to be sharing a lot of information. This can move pretty quickly, um, but it is, um, you know, just take what you need. You're going to be given a lot of ideas because these journals are such great tools and there are so many different ways you can use these tools to benefit your life and what you need specifically. So we have lots of newbies. Hello, everybody. It's so I'm so glad um, that you are here and we hope that you come back for more and more and more socials. So um, anyway, let's let's go ahead and move forward into our morning because it's a busy day. So this month's theme, January's theme is abundance. And if you are brand new here, you're going to get a different theme every month. And uh, the reason we use themes is when we look at our lives through lenses of different themes, we get to know ourselves better. We get to grow. We can see areas that we need to move forward. And there will be sometimes themes that will just stay with you. And you, you find that you do the most self-work through a particular theme. For me, one of those is um, indulgence. We had an indulgence theme many, many months ago. And I, I learned so much about myself, my family of origin, and why I felt it was so hard to indulge myself. And every day I'm continuing to work on that. So just because we finish a month doesn't mean we say goodbye to those themes. So sometimes things are gonna hit. And yes, 2021, December 2021, and it's still hanging out. Yes, Natalie, thank you. So we're finishing up abundance, but our new journals, as you saw, are passion. So because we had five weekends in January, we're going to finish up looking at what abundance means in our life through that lens 
Um, and we're going to finish up that mind map. Now, if you're brand new here, you'll know what I'm talking about. I'm going to show you the graphics and it will make more sense to you. And if you're brand new, I invite you to maybe take a screenshot and kind of work yourself backwards and, and take a look at the abundance mindset. We're going to do a rosebud thorn reflection on last week. We're going to do our weekly setup and then we're going to close and we're going to go make it a great week. <clears throat> so each month we do a mind map using that theme. So when you come to a weekly setup, each week we're going to take the theme and we're going to grasp a concept in our lives and what that concept looks like through the lens of the theme. And so this, this month, it's been abundance. We've had five weeks. We have done what do our opportunities look like through the lens of abundance, our health, um, the connections in our life. Last week was money. And week five is time. What does time look like in your life? So I've made a list of each of the areas for each week. So if this is something that you would like to grab onto and maybe work through, if you haven't been with us in January, those are the topics. I've shared my page. <clears throat> and um, one of the things I realized is I need to ask, you know, I'm I'm an early retiree. And I thought when I retired, I will have time to fill in the blank, all the things. And I actually found myself getting less done because I didn't have that structure in my life that my work life um, as a school administrator, you know, days filled with structure. And so I was kind of squandering my time. And I dawned on me as I worked through this prompt, we have the same amount of time every single day. So it's not about when I retire, I'll have time to. I need to figure out how I'm going to look at time through that lens of abundance. So I'll come back to this page if you wanted to kind of take a look at how um, I, uh, you know, framed that out. <clears throat> but so I want you guys to start digging in and thinking about week five and what time looks like to you. And I learned that, you know, or I guess probably I'll know this, but there are a ton of articles about how time is our most scarcest resource, but it's also the most squandered resource. And, and I think we can all um, get on board with that because there are things that we're just like, oh, you know. Um, so I want you to think about what distractions do you have in your life? <clears throat> because the number of distractions that happen on a regular basis daily have just exponentially jumped. You know, years ago, there was no social media. We didn't have the internet. You'd have to go to the library to actually look up, you know, information about something. Life was a little bit slower. We have video conferencing, instant messages, texting. So we get a lot of interruptions in our day. So what do those distractions look like and mean for you? Think about creating a time budget, which means you're going to be crystal clear about how you're spending your time, including the extra time that you have. Know what you need to postpone or ignore. And some of the tools we're going to talk about today, you know, that rings in true that um, we can figure out how to prioritize to make the most of our time and stick to that schedule when we can treat your time and others' time as precious. Um, what can you do to ensure no one steals this resource from you? How can you make sure you aren't squandering your time? And how many dreams have you relegated to someday? Um, again, we have 24 hours every day. And so how do you use that? How do you bring time into that lens of abundance? I'm going to put on a song and then I'll check back in. Feel free to share in the chat as you are comfortable.
Thank you so much for sharing. Um, I, I saw someone had written that every day should be someday. You know how we put things off and use the guest towels and use the fancy dishes and just move forward. And so many of you guys, I, I hear you. I waste and I squander and it's about, you know, self-regulation and not, and one of the things I said is I'm not going to pick up my phone first thing in the morning because I had gotten in that habit of like, what time is it? And then I click on buttons and I start looking at, you know, Instagram and updates on Sonder Club and all that. And before I knew it, 30 minutes was squandered. So it's tricky, but as if we, if we look at those things in our life that are, we're not happy about, there are things we can do, right? We can put in um, some, try, try to go for some new habits and some new rhythms and routines. And that's what's so beautiful about our Silk and Sonder journals. So thank you for leaning into this with me um, this morning. And, you know, there's, there's grace. So give yourself grace because we're not perfect. We're figuring things out along the way. Um, anyway, so we like to do a weekly reflection called Rosebud Thorn, and it's just a look back over our week. And so if you have the January journal, this would probably be in page 56. It's going to be at the end of last week. And if you are jumping into February, you can just do this in a scratch place or you can um, turn to a little notes page and, and take notes, or you can just do it on a, a plain scratch piece of paper. And so we're going to look at last week. We're going to think about all the things that happened. If you can't remember, maybe go look at your phone. Um, take a look at your photos. Take a look at that calendar. We're going to look at the rose from last week. What was something that we're super grateful for that happened or that's positive in your life? A bud is some opportunity that's presenting itself or something that is in the works. So something you're looking forward to, um, something that may turn into a rose in a matter of days, something that's giving you hope and inspiration to chug along. And it could be something about, I had a realization about how I'm spending my time. Um, and then a thorn, what was kind of tough about last week? Um, something that might be challenging you or causing added stress. So um, if you'll just, if you're not, if you don't have a January journal, just write rose, bud, thorn, and whatever those things were for you. I'll play a quick song and I'll come right back and check in with you.
You know, it's so important to take a look back at our week and because it helps us frame out what we want to bring forward into a new week. So thank you for taking time for this reflection. I saw a lot of thorns had to do with um, tendonitis, flaring up those health things, head colds. Uh, my thorn for this week is probably going to be that I don't have my voice like I, I am used to. Um, thank you so much for taking time to embrace this. So we finished up that January abundance look back, our rosebud thorn. So go ahead and close that January journal and let's get this a beautiful February passionate journal out. And we're going to be working on pages 26 and 27 this morning. It is going to be the fifth week of our new year. <clears throat> And so the first thing that we do each week is set how we want to feel. We claim the week. We manifest those feelings. And so I want you to drop in the chat what feeling or feelings are you trying to embrace for this upcoming week? I um, shared this last week when I did the setup. I, I found this one on the bottom left about claiming feelings for each specific days. So if you have kind of a crazy week and you know maybe Wednesday is going to be a really tough meeting, you might want to claim a name or a feeling just for that day. So drop in the chat. I'm seeing intentional confident. I, I personally want to be on top of things this week um, and just dig into some decluttering and getting my house in order. Peace, grounded, secure, and motivated. Oh, kind, empowered, productive, healthy, confident. I love this because you are claiming your week. Thank you for dropping those in. Okay, Corey, we're sending you good thoughts. She's making a tough decision this week. So um, you, you claim those feelings for the week. Here's some other feelings. If you're kind of like, I'm not sure where to start. Look at what folks are dropping in our chat, as well as there's a lot of words here. So those feelings are going to frame out our week. And our next step is to ask ourselves, what goals do we need to set so that those feelings will manifest themselves? So we're going to now look at the space right below how we want to feel. And we're going to set three, we're going to set our weekly major three goals. Now it says three. But if you want to focus on one thing, that's okay. It's your journal. You can do what you need. And if you have several more than three goals that need to happen, you can make them more. So again, it's about fashioning this tool to work for you. And the question you need to ask is how are those goals for the week going to support the way that you want to feel that fe those feelings that you just shared with us what goals need to happen so that, at, you know, when you're doing your rosebud thorn next week, you can look back and know that you embraced those feelings and you prioritized those feelings. So some tips to setting up these goals. You can use your intentions page if you've set that up for February um, or look at that monthly habit tracker. Are there some things on there that manifest into your goals this week? You can look at the lens through the lens of abundance and really focusing on that time thing that we worked on. Like if you feel like you're squandering your time and, and you need to reset some goals so that you get those feelings that you want to have, you might focus on that. Or you might start leaning into the month of February and looking at the things that you are passionate about. You could create three no goals. Like what are you going to eliminate? Because there are some things no longer serving you. And you can see there's an example there on the slide. It's, it's good to eliminate things from our lives. Too often we want to keep piling things on. Maybe look at your previous week, weeks, 
or journals to see um, if you have anything outstanding that you want to move forward into this week. You could frame your goals around a single personal challenge. Maybe one of your habits for the month is eating nutritiously. And so you may frame your goals around that habit that you have set. And if you've selected a word for the year, you could frame your three goals around that. If you don't want to set goals, that's okay. There's a lot of ways to repurpose. And so I've given you a list of things to consider, um, you know, to repurpose. So let's work on our goals or however many goals and, and share those in the chat. And I'll be right back to check with you. Thank you for sharing your goals. I've already seen a lot of folks. You are going to figure out how to put that phone down and not get those distractions that might come along your way. And that will help you reach your goals. And Nona Nat shared, you know, end of month brings about some extra busy days. And so, um, you know, we kind of have this crunch. So be filled with grace for yourself. So we're going to take a look at our weekly to do's now. We're going to drop um, we're going to, you know, go over to that little box over there um, on the left side of this page. And just a reminder, your worth is not measured by your productivity. That is a message for myself, not just not just um, something fun to share with you guys. I um, that's something that's real important to me. I want to be productive every week, but I need to remember not to measure who I am against what I get done. So, um, you know, pot calling the kettle black, that kind of thing. 
So in this to-do space, one of the tools that we like to use, and this is a really good way to reclaim time if you feel like you are um, having some issues with that time squandering. It's called the Eisenhower Matrix, and this is what it looks like. It helps you prioritize all the things on the to-do list for the week, and you plug those things into these boxes, and it helps you realize I need to get rid of some things that are not serving me or that are not going to be the best use of my time. And it goes all the way up to the things that are in urgent, important, and have to be done. Um, sometimes I have urgent and important, and I end up getting very sidetracked and not doing those things. So this is a great tool to use in that space, set that space up. <clears throat> you could also use it as a tracker. So if you're really trying to look at how you're spending your time as you go along this week, if you realize, oh, I just lost 30 minutes because I got down a rabbit hole with um, social media, you could put that in that box just for that awareness of how you're spending your time. Some other, this is what it looks like in real life. These are examples from you guys, from our Sonder family of how they took the Eisenhower matrix and set it up to work for the to do's in their week. You could also really focus on how to be. And some of you shared in your goals that you were going to do a lot of self-work this week. Um, really, the, the things that you say to yourself, how you feel about yourself, how to set boundaries. And so framing your to-do list out could look something like this. How do you want to be? How do you want to feel? And what is going to need to happen for that to occur in your life? Um, some folks like to divide these, the space up into various ways. So here's a need, want, hope, to-do list. And you can see hope, need, want. <clears throat> and I will scroll back through all of these slides while we're working on it. Some other ways to divide it up, the wants and the needs, morning routine, morning things, evening things. Um, this is something I found last week. Someone is doing what I'm going to read, what I'm going to watch, what I'm going to listen to. Dividing it up into self, home, and others. Another, another way to look at that. Now, I leave my space of the to-dos blank, and I've created a to-da list. And what that is, is my to-dos go on the next two pages. Every day I have my to-do list under the week, those weekdays. So if I do other things that that I that make me feel accomplished, um, I put those on the ta-da list and I celebrate that I did get that done. I, I shared with you earlier, I'm a productivity gal. So that gives me a lot of positive feedback. It's what works for me. Um, you could create a mini bingo with all your to-dos and then get that fun satisfaction of marking those spaces off. And then you might make a to don't list, again, leaning into what do I need to eliminate from my life so that I get the most out of my days. So I'm going to put on some music. You guys share what you're going to be doing this week, and I'll check back in with you in just a moment.
We're going to have a great week. I can feel it. Um, I, I wanted to point out Sherry is a, is a regular um, Silk and Sonder family member. And she said, this week I'm going to try. And so I wanted to just point that out that, you know, your weeks are different. So this week, something may work for you. And then you may try something else that you find works better. Or you may try something that you're like, oh, I tried it. I didn't like it. I'm going to go back to, to what I know. So remember to remain flexible. There's no one um, saying that this has to be done this way. You're going to figure out what works for you. So embrace that. All righty. So let's take a look at our habits and activity tracker that is on the bottom of the this page that we're working on. We're going to finish this up. Um, now, if you're brand new, you're, you know that there at the front of our journal, we have a monthly habit tracker and it's that wheel <clears throat> that has seven items on there. And I tend to suggest using that habit tracker for things that you would like to do every single day in the month. So I tend to put, you know, my vitamins on there. Um, I plan to make my bed every day. Uh, those kinds of things. So they are your daily reoccurrences that go on that habit tracker wheel. But our habit and activity tracker in our weekly spread can be varied in how you use it, depending on the week you're having. So I will have some examples here to show you how folks have used this. Again, I'm going to suggest going back if you have completed your intentions for February how can those intentions be brought about by putting them in the form of your habits and activities that, that you are um, planning to do this week? <clears throat> Look at that monthly habit tracker. And actually, one of my habits this month or this week is going to be checking that monthly habit tracker. I've added a couple of new things. And so I want to make sure that I'm being very mindful of turning back to that monthly habit tracker. And I'm using that. So I'm putting it in my weekly to go check that monthly. I hope that's making sense. So here are some examples. As you see the top left one there, it's there's three things on there. I love to put this one on there to remind you, you don't have to fill out all of the blanks for the week. This person wants to track set um, these three things for every day of the week. And that's it. The one below that, someone is traveling and said, nope, I'm not going to worry about it this week. So there's a fun sticker there uh, to embrace that week of fun vacations. The, if you go up to the middle, that is mine from um, a couple of weeks ago. And I have what I call the morning three and then the night three that is at the top bottom of that. Um, and that is a habit stacking technique. So I brush my teeth and I take my vitamins, but I found myself forgetting to sunscreen and I just get lazy at night and don't want to do the whole moisturizer thing. So I put put that sunscreen on with two things I was already doing. And I don't get to check that off until I do the two things I was doing and the new habit. So that's called habit stacking. Um, the one next to that in that those bright colors, someone was trying to add more fruits and vegetables. So they're just going to track what they eat and they're tracking the rainbow, which I love. The one in the middle, I want you to notice, I'm not sure what's going on in this person's life, but they are tracking for three days this week, probably a trip coming up. So they are giving themselves grace to just focus on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and they're doing four things to track. Again, don't, don't worry about filling all of these out. There's different ways of tracking and checking this off. You don't have to set a goal. The one in the middle bottom, um, they're going to be tracking by just coloring in um, for the day that those things happen. And then um, I, I tend to share this. This is one of my weeks that I did several weeks, several months ago. I had a just say no week and it was all about elimination. What do I need? to take away from my life, to serve me better. So those are some ways that you can set your habits up. James Clear, who is the author of um, Atomic Habits, says a couple of things to consider. Show up. Make sure you're showing up for yourself. A new habit should take less than two minutes. So don't bite off more than you can chew. And start with a gateway habit. And I gave you some examples there. If your habit is to walk 10,000 steps each day, he says, 
write down, put on my running shoes and make that the habit. And, and when you can do that small gateway habit, it makes space for the new habit to be established. He also suggests pair a habit with pair a new habit with an established habit, like I was sharing about my sunscreen. So you can actually write this sentence out after I, whatever the current habit is, after I brush my teeth, I will put on my sunscreen. So those are a couple of um, little hacks into getting those new habits um, going. So I'm going to put on some music while you fill these in. If you're having a crazy week, maybe you're just going to track two activities or habits. Um, don't, don't put a lot of pressure on yourself to fill out all the things. This is about making it work for your life. I'll check back in with you in just a moment. All right, good job setting up your habits and activities for the week. You, you are paving the way for a week that will serve you well. So let's slide over now to our meal plan and our mind-body health plan. And I like to put these together because a lot of folks will repurpose these spaces if they're not using um, the meal plan for the meal plan. So you can definitely plan out your meals for the week right here, um, or the space lends itself to a lot of repurposing. It's just lovely to see those days broken out. So a lot of the things I'm going to share with you can be utilized in, in all these different spaces that you see on this page. And um, we're just going to lean into this and then I'll let you get diving into how you're going to set these spaces up for you. So I have several examples from our fellow Sonder family members of how they use the meal plan. Again, these can also go over into your mind, body, health plan or even down below in your shopping list. Um, using this space for journal prompts and responses, you can see they've utilized post-it notes, which I love the questions on top, the responses underneath, um, maybe leaning into the seven types of rest and learning about that and what you need 
<clears throat> a self-care plan, creating a weekly reflection. Once again, I'll go back and forth through these as we work into them. The affirmations of, of Sandra Club, you might want to just put them in your meal plan so they're all in one space. And then if you'll notice on the left, this is from one of our Sonder family members, um, tracking the intake of the, the liquids that are going in and color coding. And um, I know that she used the uh, black for chocolate, but I thought that's a great repurpose for coffee and blue for water and brown for tea. So if you have, a, you want to track what you're drinking, that way you could color code it. I thought that was a really great idea. You could use this as a chore list, an appointment list, a wardrobe tracker, or a um, packing list. <clears throat> some folks will use this space as a symptom tracker. So if you're trying to gather some data, some information to share with your healthcare provider, this is a great space to use that. And then you've got all the things in one list and you can show your healthcare provider. Maybe you'll use it as a daily debrief, just kind of that daily reflection at the end of the day, um, a schoolwork, homework, lesson plan, office list, the things to your task list at work. Um, it's really a nice way to isolate maybe work list from all the other things that, that are going on in your life. Um, and then a reflection to do the glad reflection at the end of the week, what you're grateful for, what you learned, what delighted you, what you achieved. <clears throat> now the mind body health plan. I know a lot of folks use this for, um, you know, their self-care practices, their exercise routines. And so here are some examples of ways to use that space um, and, you know, make it again, make it work for you. I've been doing the yoga with Adrian 30 day January journey. And so when I've completed um, a workout, I just write the name of the workout Monday through Sunday there. And then here's some other ways um, of looking at that mind body health plan. Um, if you like to celebrate the national days of, you could use the um, mind body health plan space to do that. You can see an example there on the bottom right. Now that's not for this week. That's just um, an example from another week. So let me scroll through um, these spaces and put on some song, some music while you work through your meal plan and your mind body health plan. Let us know if you're using um, the meal plan as a meal plan, or if you're going to repurpose and how you're going to do that and what you're going to be putting in your mind, body, health plan. Share as you will in the chat. Abundance is all around me. Abundance all around me It's in the flowers It's in the trees It's in the honey It's at your feet It's in the stars that you see It's our birthright It's our birthright So look around and see it everywhere It's in your shoes, your hats The clothes you get to wear All I know, all I know Abundance is everywhere Abundance is all around Abundance is all around me. It's in the earth you walk upon a gentle breeze. It's in the water that bathes you, bathes you, bathes you with your friends. It's having a laugh. It's breathing fresh air and watering the plants. Listen around and hear a 
it everywhere It's with the bats, the bees, the birds that fly with flare All I know, all I know Abundance is everywhere all around me Abundance is all around me It's in the green, green grass, the big blue ocean It's with the whales and dolphins that play in splendid motion it's in the carpet even, it's in the rug even It's in the bed you sleep in, the sheets you drench with sweat even So look around and feel it everywhere It's with the people and the love you get to share Breathe it in, breathe it out, breathe it in, breathe it out, breathe it in Breathe it out, breathe it in, breathe it out Feel it here, feel it now Feel it in your blood and bones Feel it in your every cell Feel it be natural Feel it now, feel it now Feel it now, feel it now Feel it now, feel it now. All right. Thank you for sharing. You guys had a lot of great ideas of how you repurpose these spaces to work in your life. So let's take a quick peek at our shopping list. Again, another space that can be used in a number of ways. Here are some ideas on how to use that. If you don't want to use it as a shopping list, I have my shopping list on my phone in Google Keep that I share with my husband. So whoever is out and about can get the items and then we don't duplicate. So I actually use mine as a weekly bingo board that I put some tasks in, but also some treats. So treats and tasks. Um, if you're having a fun week, like a birthday, happy birthday to our February people, um, you might want to just do a, a birthday bingo. It's a great place for chores, bills, packing list, whatever works for you. And I gave you a ton of ideas there. Additionally, right below it is I am loving and I, this is a, just a fun space. What are you loving right now? And I have some examples there. I love someone put, I'm loving the color green, maybe a book you're reading. Um, I love that bottom right one. I am loving myself by, so take a moment and think about what you are loving in your life. And finally, friends, I'm going to ask you if you get your setup all done and there's a space that you've repurposed that you'd like to share, throw that on Sonder Club. We would love to see it. As we exit today, I'm going to go back to these slides. These are some weekly spread setups, those Monday through Fridays, just so you can see how folks set that up. Here are the QR codes you need. Now this month, I'll let you know, we are they're doing a revamp. So you'll only have one QR code starting with February's um, socials. But um, I will point you to that YouTube link for the social recordings. Be sure you save that as a favorite in your bookmarks because it is not searchable and it is just for Sonder family members. 
members to use um, your um, the app. Please join the Sonder Club app if you're not already part of that. And you can do that by either looking at these codes that, or these links that Jen is dropping in our chat this morning. My playlist is here, but Jen also dropped you um, the link to my Spotify for, for this month's playlist, the, the songs that I used. So without further ado, we're going to end um, our time together. Thank you for starting Monday with Team Jennifer. Thank you for putting up with my scratchy voice. I'll be doing a monthly setup tonight, so no more talking for the rest of the day. I love waking up with you guys and starting my time, my new weeks with the Sonder family. Make it an abundantly passionate week. I'm just so broke you won't believe Can't get a dollar out of me And as far as I can see I'm losing control like a bad disease No, I just can't get relief I've been shot down by the life police Cause every day I try to rise but I can't succeed Can anybody find a cure for me? You can be better, better, better Or you can be better, better, better Well, life gives you lemons Now every day is like a brand new year. I throw my hands up in the air like I just don't care. I'm on walking down the streets feeling like oh yeah, oh yeah. But like the bottom of the glass now I see clear. So now I laugh just a little more. I stand much taller than I did before. I know I'm not where I need to be, but I thank God that I'm not where I used to be. I used to be bitter, 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 but now I feel better, better, better.